Just yesterday, I went online to see if there was any movies that I have not seen yet that were playing in my area. To my surprise, I found one Spanish-speaking film. It is a documentary called Narco Cultura, which I believe in English means the narcotic culture. I'm just gonna call it the narcotic culture from now on, so I don't butcher the Spanish language more than I already have. Yeah, so I went online, I checked out the, doc the trailer to this film, and from the moment I watched the trailer, it seemed like this was going to be a very interesting watch. And I was extremely excited, so today I've actually seen the film. The movie tells the story of two individuals, one who lives in the States and the one that lives in Mexico. Now the one that lives in Mexico is from Juarez, Mexico, which is right below the border of America and pretty much right across the way from El Paso, Texas. And in 2010, over 3,000 human beings were murdered in Juarez, Mexico, where only three to five people were murdered in El Paso, Texas. So that's kind of the balance, the, the, the little contrast that we get right there, what's going on in the States and what's going on in Mexico. And then we also get to know an, another individual who is a singer-songwriter that's kind of capitalizing on all this, making music, and he lives in Los Angeles, California. He has a wife and some kids, and we get this balance of knowing this individual in Mexico and knowing this individual in Los Angeles as he's creating his music. And I really enjoyed this movie, this movie overall. I've really found both of these sides to be extremely fascinating. I think the director does a really great job at getting us to really care about what's going on in Mexico and of course what's going on in the subculture of music that's being created. Now it's music that I've never really been inter interested in. It's not really my cup of tea, but it was really fascinating to see, you know, it's nothing new. I mean, artists and, and musicians and filmmakers have always capitalized on the tragedies that have been going on in the world and, and try and give in a way that's entertaining at the same time informative. And I felt like this director really did a good job to do the same thing. He gave us both sides of the fence, though I was more interested in the guy that's a CSI, works for the CSI, and investigates all these murders and boxes them up. There's this whole room that they show that there's all these boxes of all these investigations. It seems that's all they really can do, and I felt so sad. Uh, there's no prosecution going on, there's nobody going really any, there's no real trials. And I think it's because the people that are really in control really don't have any control. And that's really the whole the tragedy about this whole film. Because you see this guy, the CSI guy, he's working his butt off. with He's having friends around him being murdered. People that are co-workers that are being murdered. And he's fearing his life every day. And he's doing the best job he can because it's what he loves. It's his career. And if he doesn't have this, he's really got nothing. And then, of course, you got on the other side, you got the guy in the States that he loves this. It's his career. If he didn't have it, he probably, he's likely, he still have his family and stuff, but he almost felt like he probably doesn't have anything as well. And there's a point in the film where the guy actually does go to Mexico to get more material and learn more about his culture. And I just felt like this movie was just handled so beautifully and handled so well that we go back and forth and I never really felt lost. I always felt informed and interested and wishing that I could do something. I hope the right people that, that, that have the power that actually can make changes see this film. I do also recommend it. It is for it, I recommend it for the casual viewer as well, mainly the ones that are over 18 to see this movie. Now, if you've got small kids, don't take them to the theater like the screen and I win. I don't know what these parents were thinking because there are images in this film that are disturbing. We don't see anybody get killed, but we all we see all the aftermaths. And let's say the people that are doing these murders, they don't have a, they're not prejudiced on age, on religion, on sex. If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you might get killed. And it's just, it, it just opened my eyes up and showed me a side of the world that I'm not too aware of. I didn't really know that it was going on. And I felt like the filmmakers did an exceptional job to open up my eyes and make me think, make me want to discuss this. But I hope that I hope the people that do have some power will see this film for what it is and try and make a change. All I feel like I can say is that I do recommend that you check out this movie. This movie is playing in your area. Go see it. Leave the kids at home. Hire a babysitter. Go check out this film. I don't care what race or religion that you are. I do recommend this film. It is a very interesting and exceptional film that really opened up my eyes and a documentary that was great as well. It's one of the most unique and cool documentaries and most interesting documentaries that I've actually seen this year. And I'm going to give the film the narco cultura, or the narcotic culture, I'm going to give the film three and a half stars out of four. I'm Movie Man Chad. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Twitter and I'm on Facebook. And please go to WeLiveFilm.com and subscribe right here on YouTube to We Live Film. And if you enjoy this review, please click here and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you again so much for watching. Have a great holiday season and I'll talk to you at the next review.
Peace on Earth.